and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and an absolutely extraordinary looking puzzle. Uh, almost comical, I would say, in terms of its uh, setup uh, from the great codec. Um, the puzzle on the screen is called Cabo Verde, uh, which I think is like Cape Verde, isn't it? Um, and I'm, I'm fairly confident I'm right about this because I, I typed Cape Verde into Wikipedia and it showed me, um, and I didn't know this already, that this is the sort of geography of the Cape Verde Islands. And you can see they very much sort of form a s sort of arrow, um, arrow tip. And if you look back at this grid here, it's the same. So basically, Kodak has somehow <laughs> arranged these cages um, into, into a map of the, of the Cape Verde Islands. It really is something amazing. And the rule set for this You'd think with just these tiny little cages that the rule set would have to be very uh, enormous in order to create a unique solution. But no, it really is. It's it's a bit of a, a night's move fest and something weird going on on the diagonals. And that is all. Um, so I've no doubt we're in for um, a treat today. I saw one of the comments on this puzzle on Logic Masters Germany called it utterly amazing. So <laughs> we should be in for a treat. Um, now, before we kick off, I need to say a hearty congratulations to several more people who have solved all of the puzzles in our duality Sudoku hunt over on Patreon. This month's reward, um, the feedback has just been incredible. Sudoku skunk works have outdone themselves. Um, and the following, I mean, lot actually, the number of people who've solved all 14 puzzles is incredible, but I'm, I'm just doing these in batches because otherwise the whole video would consist of me reading out names. But very well done uh, to Bryony Charlwell, uh, to Abinoff Jane, to Michelle Koopmanch, Johnny Bolton, Lady Ruatha, Lay Low. Uh, Stefan Vona, Guy Margalith, Wesley Siebenthaler, uh, Nancy Venkatesen, I think, um, Martin Schergott, uh, Jürgen Wolkenfuss, Adam Gaffney, Fool on Hill, and George White. And there will be more names tomorrow. If you, ha if you are a patron of the channel and you haven't tried those puzzles yet, do have a go. I can tell you we've had, I think, two and a half thousand correct entries to the intermediate step, which is to solve the first four puzzles. So they are definitely doable. Um, and yeah, it's uh, people are having a lot of fun with it. So that's grand to hear. Um, now, next birthdays. Actually, I'm going to start off with quite a special birthday. Um, it's my godson's birthday today. Uh, and my godson happens to also be the son of one Mark Goodliffe. So, Will, I hope you have a brilliant day today. Um, I'm sorry if the Chelsea-related present I got you isn't the sort of Chelsea you were expecting. Um, anyway, apart from that, who else? Crystal, your sister, Yancey, got in touch with us and said that you'd have appreciate a shout out and you enjoy the videos. I also believe from Yancey's email that you are working on or maybe working on a CTC related painting, which sounds extraordinary. We'd love to see that if that ever gets actually painted. Um, also, Sam from your girlfriend, Meredith, I think it's your birthday today. Now, this one confused me when I saw this come up because I'm pretty sure that I said happy birthday to Meredith from the, from Meredith's boyfriend Sam just a couple of days ago. So I don't know if the two of you have birthdays very close together or this is just a, a weird coincidence. But anyway, Sam, it's your birthday today and I hope you have a good one. And also Xavier, you've turned 29 and I know this because your girlfriend, I think it's Laura, um, uh, got in touch with us. And I hope, so I hope everyone has a brilliant birthday today. Um, many happy returns to you all. And that's all the news. So I still don't know when we're streaming next. As soon as I do, I will let you know, probably on Twitter, maybe. Um, anyway, Cabo Verde, what has the great Maestro Codec done with this puzzle? I'll read you the rules. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply, i.e. place the digits one to nine once each into every row, column and three by three box. It's amazing how, how many um, emails we get from people who don't know what normal Sudoku rules are. So that's why I think our testers have taken to including that that long version of Sudoku rules in the instructions. Um, in cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. So those two cells sum up to 14, those two sum, sum up to five, those sum up to 13, etc. 
Now, here's the weird rule. Each main diagonal can only contain three distinct digits. So that means on this diagonal, you know, if we worked out that was one, two, and three, which I've realized is just silly because oh, let's do nine, eight, seven. If this was nine, eight, seven, then these cells here would have to be nine, eight, seven in some order, and those cells would have to be nine, eight, seven. Um, because we can only have three digits on a diagonal or on a main diagonal. Um, and then cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digits. So if you're not familiar with the knight's move rule, let's imagine the central cell of the grid was a one. Now a chess knight in that position could jump to all of those cells in a single move. And therefore none of these outlined cells could contain the digit one, because if they did, they would be a knight's move apart. And that is not allowed in this puzzle. Do have a go. I mean, I can't commend Codex Puzzles to you more strongly. He is an absolute maestro. Um, the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I'm instantly drawn to that four cage, which must be a one three cage. And I can tell you something interesting. I'm seeing straight away about these 14 cages as well. And that is that they must be different. What do I mean by different? Well, if you think about the ways you can make two digits add up to 14 in Sudoku, you could have a five and a nine or a six and an eight. Now think about what would happen if these were both the same flavor of 14, 14 cage. If these were both six, eight, where are we gonna put six and eight into box two? And the answer is we could put, well, this would have to be a Schrodinger cell. It would have simultaneously have to be both of the digits. So that tells us that whatever this 14 cage is, this one isn't. Which I presume is somehow relevant, probably towards the diagonals. I mean, the 13, the two 13 cages and the five cage, um, well, five actually, maybe I'll label that. That's got to be either one, four or two, three, but 13 has three different versions. It could be four, nine, five, eight or six, seven. I'm very suspicious that it must be something to do with the the diagonals here because we're only allowed so this digit here in row one column one that has to appear in this box and appear in this box and there's only one digit right there's one digit that appears on right it appears on both diagonals the central cell of the grid is obviously on both diagonals so this digit must appear in this box and in this box wow right okay that is instantly interesting oh i hate that color uh, so i hate that color um let's go yellow um so the question that came into my mind there is is this digit the central digit of the grid and the answer I think is no for a rather beautiful reason if this was yellow where would we put yellow in this box remembering the 14 cages are different so this digit cannot be yellow well yellow would have to go here because we know it must be on this diagonal but that would mean yellow was in one of those three cells, which is impossible by the power of yellow. Because this digit, because of the knight's move constraint, sees all three of those cells. You can't put a, a yellow there or there because a chest knight could jump to those. So yellow is not there, which means in box one, yellow is in one of, whoops, let's get rid of that yellow. Yellow is in one of those two cells. Oh, of course, but that could be yellow, couldn't it? I was about to say, well, we couldn't have yellow here. We couldn't have yellow there and there because uh, that would give us the same problem. If this was yellow and this was yellow, again, yellow in box two is in one of these three cells and we get the same issue that we had with this one. Um, but if this is yellow, that could be yellow i think no it can't <laughs> actually no it can't okay that can't be yellow either this is so weird this is so weird right so if we put the yellow on this cape verde island 
Then we ask where yellow goes in this box. Because blue and green are different, yellow goes there. And now where do we put yellow in box two again? Well, it's in one of those three cells, which doesn't seem at first blush to be in any way interesting, except that one tells us this can't be yellow. That one tells us this can't be yellow. This is Knight's move. And by Sudoku, that can't be yellow. So that is not yellow. Uh, this is, I mean, this is already just so pretty, isn't it? Um, so, well, now that, now can't we come back to this? This can't be yellow at all. I think this has to be yellow because now where we've got to is that the yellow cell in box one is in one of these two cells and the yellow cell in box three is in one of those two cells. Now, if, if we try and put yellow here, the yellow has to be there in box three which means in box two, yellow is in one of those, which it can't be. So that is not yellow, this is yellow. And therefore... <laughs> okay, we're gonna continue with this merry ro uh, road that we're on because now where does yellow go in box two? And the answer is in many different places, but it can't go there because of the knight's move from here. So yellow is in one of those three cells, which means yellow can't be there. Because if the yellow was here, you now couldn't put yellow in box two because of the knight's move again. This is weird. This is absolutely weird. Now that is yellow, so that's not yellow. So yellow could be a yellow could be in the four cage. And that would make it quite a low number. So can we get yellow down here then? Because yellow we know must repeat on this diagonal and it's not in that one. So yellow's in one of those two cells. Uh, no, no, it's not. Right, I can do this. Okay, I'm just gonna highlight where yellow is in box nine. But now let's look at where yellow is in box six because this one is powerful. It rules out yellow from all those and these by Sudoku. That one rules those two out by Sudoku. So yellow is in one of those, which means it can't be here. So this is yellow, which means Oh, this is so pretty, Codec. It really is. How do you come up with this stuff? Look, it's the same this pattern. It's the same thing that we got up there, I think. So I think there's some sort of symmetry coming into this because if we look at where yellow goes in box eight, it's got to be in one of these three cells. But now ask where yellow goes in box seven. Now we know it's on the diagonal because it's the middle digit of the grid. So it's not here by Sudoku, so it's in one of those two. But if it was here, it rules yellow out of box eight altogether. So yellow hides in the corner and that means uh, yellow is in one of those two. I'm not sure I can improve upon that because this one doesn't seem to do it. Oh, it, it, this is just showing off. This is just showing off. Right. Can that be yellow? And the answer is no, because if that's yellow, remember, well, that would make this yellow by Sudoku which would mean yellow was a one or a three, which you can't put in a 13 cage because you can't put 10 or 12 into a 13 cage, at least not in this Sudoku. So those are not yellow, these are yellow. Uh, no, I thought that was gonna be a nice move away from that one, but it's not. Um, no, okay. That's ju it's just gorgeous. This is the sort of thing that will make people happy. People who have a go at this puzzle will just be made happy, Codec. That's what's going to happen. Now, I need to make myself happy by actually finishing this. How do we go further? So I know I've got to put blue in one of two places now. So, okay, so that can't be blue. Yeah, I'm just, well, uh, okay. So I'm looking at this digit 
and asking where it can go in this box. Now it can't go there, it's not yellow and a 1 and a 3 would never fit in a 14 cage so it's actually in one of these three cells but we can actually go a bit further, I just label all those blue for a moment because blue in box 5 is in this cell or this cell so if this was blue that would rule out that for, by knight's move and that by sudoku so that is not blue so blue is in one of these two cells and blue right okay so blue in box three cannot be on the diagonal and that's because there can only be one digit that repeats on on both diagonals in this puzzle because well you can see immediately if we try and put blue here the implication is that we have to put blue on one of those and simultaneously on one of those in box five and that clearly will not work so i think blue is in one of these cells i don't know whether i want to use flashing here that might be an idea actually let's do some flashing where so where we don't know where where blue is we'll use um we'll use a gray flash to indicate that blue is in one of two positions in a box so i should gray flash these as well gray flash the yellows now so i suspect Ooh, okay what do i suspect here blue right blue's in one of those two cells isn't it whoa okay i'm struggling here to see exactly oh is it green in this box i'm wondering about this cell so oh hang on hang on i've got to be careful here i've just i've realized i've i've double i've put blue and gray into that cell but this it was this cell i was thinking about that oh okay i'm going to change right i'm going to change the color of this cell and I make that purple because that the logic that I did with blues, I was just thinking about this corner digit because I wanted to put it on the diagonal twice. That digit can't go on the diagonal, so that was totally inappropriate for it to remain blue. Okay, yes, all right. So this digit, well, yeah, okay. Where does that digit go in this box? It's not here it's not it, it's not one or three by virtue of the fact it's in a 14 cage and it's not yellow because yellow sees itself already so it's in one of those cells which means purple is in one of these cells now if purple was on the diagonal that would give us exact oh no hang on no that can't be on or can it okay, no purple is not on this diagonal Oh, uh, actually, I'm not sure now. I think I've confused myself by thinking about this being blue. <laughs> um, if this, so purple is in one of those three cells. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I do know anything about so although I know purple's in one of those I think but I don't think I can necessarily map purple onto the same cells as blue in this box so hmm all right I'm going to go back to green I'm going to go back to this digit because at least I know right so I probably have to um, differentiate these don't I so I'll make that one orange so let's just think about green exclusively and where it goes on this diagonal so green is in one of those and in one of those now does that tell us anything about the world the answer is green can't be there Mm, the problem with these two cells is there's no natural knights move away from these two cells i mean that cell i suppose can't be green and that cell can't be green 
and that cell can't be green and that cell can't be green but I wasn't really planning on putting green in here because I can see by Sudoku it doesn't go in there hmm okay whoa no this has suddenly got much harder than I was expecting after the start the start was really really pretty and sort of flowed and now I've just ground to a mighty halt so maybe I've got to do more diagonaling. So let's... Oh, but the problem is if I label this with a colour, I'm not convinced this is a new colour. It could be purple, couldn't it? But I want to keep track of what's on this diagonal. So I'm, I think I'm going to label this with red maybe. Yeah, okay, we'll make it red, but bear in mind it could be the same as purple. But at least now, I know those two squares are definitely, they are red and green. These are definitely red and green. Now, so red can't be in those cells. Red can't be here. So red's in one of these, which means, uh, no, it doesn't, doesn't quite mean anything good, I don't think. Okay, let's try the same thing on this diagonal. So this digit, we need to give a color. Now, are we potentially double mapping colors if we make this? Let's just make that dark gray. Could that be the same as any other color? It can't be blue, can't be purple, can't be yellow, can't be red, can't be green because green can't appear on this diagonal. Can that be orange? Not sure. I'm not sure it. I'm not sure whether it can be orange or not. So I think there's some there's some weirdnesses. There's, we've got potential mapping of colours overlapping here. Maybe I take these two out. So it's not. Yeah, I think that's what I might do. I might take these two out because I'm just not sure. I think I think I've got to focus on the diagonals. So now these two squares have got to be double grey. These two squares have got to be sorry, not double grey, but grey and blue. Um, that one is actually blue, therefore. So that, that gets to keep its blue. It's completely blue. So what do we know about these digits now? Ah, right. I know something. Okay, that digit suddenly become interesting to me. Because it cannot be... just going to check that I agree with what I'm about to say here actually do I agree with it I think it's right yeah I think it's right so where does this digit go in this box is the question I'm wondering about and that's because this digit it can't be red or green because it sees those it sees green by Sudoku or by Knight's move so it's not it's not in those two squares and it can't be grey, because it sees that in its row. And it can't be blue, because blue seems to have to be down here. So and blue's there. So this digit can't be in that sort of dice 5 shape in the middle box. So it's in one of those two cells, which means it is not in the 5 cage. Which means that is in the 5 cage. Oh, this is cute. Let me think about this. Actually, there's loads of stuff going on here. Where does this digit go in this box? And the answer is I don't quite know, but I very nearly know. Because it can't go in those cells by Sudoku. It can't go in there by Knight's Move Sudoku. It can't go in a 14 cage and it's not yellow. So it's in one of those cells, which means it's placed in box three because it can't go there. 
because that would be a knight's move away. So that is a one or a three, um, which means that, and we already know it's not in this five cage. Oh, here we go. Here we go, right. Oh, this is beautiful. Codec again. What is this puzzle? It's weird. Right, we've worked, if we think about the nature of a, of a five cage, it's either one, four or two, three. So once this digit is ruled out of, of because these don't add up to five, this the counterpart of this digit in this cage must be in this five cage once this digit is not in it. Hopefully that's clear to everybody. So if this digit is in it, now I can make that orange and reuse the color I changed from earlier. So if orange is in one of those cells, and it is, there's a, well, orange is not in those cells, because if orange was in either of these cells in box three, it would rule itself out of the five cage. So if orange is not there, I don't know. Orange can't be green because green's in a 14 cage. Orange can't go in there by Sudoku. Orange is not purple and orange is not yellow. Orange goes there. And if that's orange, where does orange go in this box? And it can't go there because that's a knight's move away from orange. So it goes there, which seems to tell us that that's orange. That becomes purple, which means we've got sort of one, three pairs. Oh, so there's probably some weird symmetry in the final grid. We'll probably find this pattern repeats all over the place. This is very suspicious. Um, yeah, okay. Now I'm going to ask where orange goes in the middle box, because I think, I think orange has to go into one of those four cells, doesn't it? I'm just going to double check that. Yeah, orange definitely is not blue because it can't be. It can't be green. That's in a 14 cage. And it can't be red or grey because they're in its row. So this digit here can't go there by knight's move. It's in there, so it's not in those, those two cells. So it's there. That is orange. Which means that orange... Uh, no, orange can't go in a 13 cage. So orange is in one of these. Orange, oh, good grief. Right, orange is placed in row four because it's got to go in one of those three cells. But this being orange rules out those two. <laughs> so that becomes orange, which means that is that fixes our yellow down here, which means that's got to be yellow. That That's no longer yellow. All our yellows are done. Quite a lot of our oranges are done. Orange is not no orange is not red or green orange can't go in a 13 cage so that's orange <laughs> i mean i'd love to know codec when you came up with this puzzle whether it almost gave you pleasure to set it, whether you were just chuckling away to yourself, because I just think you must have been. Where does orange now go in this box? It doesn't look like it's going to work, but it does, because this the orange being in either of these cells rules orange out of this domino because of the knight's move constraint. So orange is forced to be there. Yeah, orange is not blue and it's not grey. So that's fine. That's got to be a one or a three. That fixes the position of orange look in, in this box. So that now is a two or a four, which might be worth some colouring action. Um, anyway, that's now not orange. That's orange. So we can do that. I've got all the oranges in the grid placed. Now, I want to just think about this digit because I was asking myself where it went in this box. Ah, uh, uh, no. Okay, I think I've got to be careful because 
Well, it's not red and it's not green by Sudoku stroke night smooth Sudoku. So it's not those cells. It's not these cells and it's not orange. So it's one of these two. Now we know that it can't be blue if this was blue because blue is in a 14 cage. But this doesn't need to be blue. It could be gray, which is that digit. So, I mean, this digit is definitely in one of these two cells. But I think it might be able to be here if this is grey. Is there some weird reason why this can't be grey? Grey, grey has to be... Is grey green or is it different? From, no, it's different from green because it's on the other diagonal. So grey is in one of those, which means grey is in one of these two cells in box number two. So if this was, if this was, oh no, that can't be grey because it's, ah, this might be important. So this digit, now can't be grey because of, there's grey is in these cells apparently. I'm running out of colours here. Let's just make this black for a moment. So if we come back to box five and ask where this maps to, well, it's clearly not in those cells. It's clearly not orange and it's not red and green. Now it can't be blue and it can't be grey because if it was grey, you couldn't put grey in box three. So these two are ruled out. So it goes exactly there. And that's a two or a four. So that digit also, look, is in one of those two cells, which means that this is not a blue pair anymore. In fact, it's a blue-black pair now. Right, OK, so can't I ask where the black digit goes in box one? Because it's not there. It's not yellow, it's not orange, it's not purple, and it cannot go in a 14 gauge because it's a two or a four. So it goes there. Which I think means I can place it by Sudoku now in this box, box four, which means oh, I could go in there. That's annoying. In fact, if it did go in there, it would be mighty powerful because it's got to be in one of those cells. Um, it's definitely not red. It's definitely not green. No, that's right. So it's one of these cells. But if it was in the 13 cage, it would have to be a 4 9 13 cage. So can we somehow narrow this down a bit further oh, I don't know that I can actually if it was here then can these four to 13 cages be the same I wonder I don't know I don't know if that's what I've got to think about it might be I can't quite see how to propagate this this number forwards, which is, I think, potentially. Well, this might be important because if we think about what else we can do at this point, what else can we do? I suppose I could dif differentiate my greens and my reds somehow, or my blues and my greys. That would be quite a natural thing to do. How do we do that? <laughs> um, where does that look like it's sort of in any way restricted? That is the question I'm wondering about. It could be to do with... Ah, I don't know. I don't know where to look actually it could it, maybe it's maybe it's that digit i've got to think about next but the pro oh this was the problem digit ah hang on where does red go in that box now hang on hang on hang on 
Well, doesn't red have to go there? Red, it does. Yeah. Sorry, this has all become... So, what? oh, I see. Right, I see how I... So, I, w I wasn't sure about red before, because red could have gone here. But now, because black couldn't go there, red has to go here. Well, that might be helpful. Yeah, that is helpful. So red is not there. So that's green. That's red. And now, well, so now red, red can't be here, look, by, by knight's move. So red is in the same position as blue in box two. Well, for the last couple of days, I had some amazing coloring puzzles. Um, oh, no, nearly. So red is very restricted now in box four. It's one of two places. That can't be red because that would rule red out of the middle box. So red is quite restricted in box six. Come on, I just... It's really close, I think, to cracking. It's really close to cracking. Um, I mean, do I know what those digits are now? I mean, obviously, there's... I'm just wondering in terms of my colour. Is one of them green? Yeah, one of them's green, which is that digit. So one of those is green. And the only other colour we've not identified is we need to differentiate these. One of these is grey, one of these is something else. But apparently I don't know which of those is which. But that seems to suggest to me I know what that digit is. Yeah, that's... Oh, I see, because now I've got the reds locked into here I now know that's the black digit so the blacks and the reds are doing something very odd together now those two squares now have to be uh, one of these is black and that's oh black I wanted to do um, and that means we can ask where black goes in this row uh, we're still not going to know the answer to this but it is definitely in one of those two cells now so we're very nearly resolved on all all of the black digits we still have the opportunity to put a black digit here in this 13 cage. So, oh, so green is, oh, we still don't know where green goes. So there is a phantom digit, which is one of these, that's going to go up there and in one of those. And other than that, do I know... Oh, is the phantom digit? Yeah, okay, I bet the phantom digit is in one of those two cells as well, isn't it? So whatever goes in one of those is going to go in one of these. So, okay. Okay, but I did manage to do a little bit of green and redding. So can I do the same with... What were my two digits on this diagonal? Blue and sort of medium grey blue and medium grey I would love to but I'm not immediately seeing how to do it if I'm honest um, what's the most likely way of making progress with this? I'm not sure whether it's better to concentrate on grey or better to concentrate on blue. Maybe blue in this bottom box? Mm, don't actually, I don't really like that. I think blue could be here, here, or here. And that doesn't seem to be pairing up very naturally with where it is in box nine. Can we... Hmm, I don't know. 
Maybe it could be simple questions like maybe there's a reason this just can't be blue because that would force this to be blue, one of these to be blue, that specifically to be blue. Does that break for some reason? That specifically to be blue. So actually, if we if we did have this pattern, blues would almost be all placed. We'd have to put a bl uh, if that's blue, that's blue, that's blue. And uh, actually, that doesn't work. But that is a real chain. I'm probably not going to use that. Um, unless I can see a better way of forcing. Of forcing that to break. Because what I'm what I'm doing there is I'm just hypothesizing this as blue. And it just it runs out of room in this box. So it forces that to be blue, which forces this to be blue. And now where are we going to put the blue in this box now? It can't go there by night's move. It can't go there by night's move. So it has to go there. And that means that we have to put blue here, which is which is night's move away. I mean, maybe that is fair. Maybe that is fair. I don't know. I don't know whether to use that or not. It was. It, it is visualizable. It is visualizable. It's just tricky. But let me just see if I can see anything that's a little less difficult than that. Let's try green in this box. Where's green in this box? Can't go there. Look, because that's going to break this pattern. So green is in one of those three positions. Green in this box over here. Ah. Ah, yes, this is where I should have looked. This is better. Where does this digit go in this box? It can't go in any of those cells. And therefore, it's in row six, which means that is not green. So that's got to be red, and that's become green. And now, if that's red, those aren't red. So this is red. This is red. And as a reward for... The redness we have discovered. Oh, if that's red, that's got to be blue. So that's got to be. Oh, this is the. <laughs> we've done it a different way. Oh, that's lovely. I prefer this way as well. It was. It required less trickery, didn't it? So we're using the power of reds, we've disambiguated this, which disambiguates the cells beneath it. So now, does that help us? So I'm now wondering if we can identify. Yeah. Yes, we can. Where does blue go in this box? And it can't go there, so it must hide it here, which means that's not blue, which means that therefore is, is blue, which means this is blue, so this is grey, which means that is not grey, so that loses its colour and this gains colour. So grey, this grey is in the 14 cage there. Oh, ooh, okay, those, we now know those cells, we know actually what they are, which might be important. That's slightly odd, but that being a, a black digit means that's not a black digit, so this is a black digit, so it still doesn't differentiate these, I don't think. So we've got all six black digits in the top of the grid, I'm just left with this little funny X-wing pattern at the bottom. Right, where does red go in this box? It goes there by Sudoku, which places red in this box. We know green is in one of these. So green is in one of those. Yeah, we're not far away now, I don't think. I don't think we're far away. That There's a green in one of those. And this is the uncolored digit. And I've run out of colors to use for it. Because I'd have to use the grey, the grey, this colour. But I'm using grey to indicate these two cells are one is grey, one's one's dark grey, and I'm using it down here to indicate one of these is black. But I'm not saying one of these is light grey, so I better be a bit careful about that. Um, okay. Do I know? Oh, I see. You no, know, one of these is purple. One of these is this. <laughs> so it's all getting quite tricky. 
Okay, well, let me come back to what I've just noticed about these cells. Now, blue and red are these digits, which are in a 14 cage. So those cells there are the digits that add up to 14 in Sudoku. So one of these is 5, 9, one of these is 6, 8. And that means we actually know what those cells are, because they're not 1, 3, and they're not numbers that add up to 14. So they're 2, 4, and 7. And we know black is uh, 2 or 4, it's not 7 apparently. Right, is that somehow... So, okay, so I imagine what we're going to have to do here is somehow force one of these digits into a 13 cage. It must be about these 13 cages, they're really underused, aren't they? So I must be able to do better with these. So that's going to be our next challenge um, now. And the other challenge is to pick the digit that's going to be the most useful. So purple can't go in those cells, can it? So purple is in one of these two. And therefore one of those two. Oh, ooh, wait a second. Oh no, that's not good because purple could go in these. So I was thinking this purple might allow us to... Oh, per no, we can because purple can't be in a 13 cage. So where does purple go in this box? It's got to be in one of those cells. That's quite big, actually. Because that means that's not purple, which means this is purple. Oh, I thought that was going to do something a little bit more dramatic, uh, but it's not, apparently. Um, OK, all right. Well, where does purple go in this box? And the answer is I have not got a Scooby-Doo, except it's in row seven or row nine, just as it is here. So purple in this row, which oh, you could see this by considering the 13 cage must be there. That's its only cell. So what's that digit then? Uh, we don't know. Well, we know it's not green, actually. So what, okay, what are the colors of these two digits? Because we can identify that now. One of them is this digit, which is therefore not a two. And the other one is light, it's this color, isn't it? This color has not appeared in this row. So it goes in one of those cells along with this digit, which now can't be a two. So, so this cage is either four, nine, or a seven, six, which means that this color here is either nine or six. So if that's nine or six, green is either five or eight. Which, uh, which might be important, but it doesn't seem to quite do the business, does it? Um, Okay, so these digits are green, this digit and that digit. I'm wondering whether to make this light gray. This is another example of how we've run, I've run out of colors. This happened the other day with a puzzle. I can't remember which one it was, um, but I know Sven is working on this as we speak. Um, okay, so the, ah, so, okay, here's the, here's the question finally. This digit in this row, where does it go? And if we look at this row, we've only got two spaces. We've got this space and this space, but that can't go there because it's a knight's move away. So that digit goes there, which forces that therefore to be purple, this to be purple, this to be a four or a seven, the same as this. Um, so let's put that in and see if that helps us. So that's now purple which means this is not purple. So that's become, this has become purple. This has become black. So black, the black digit is a two or a four. The purple digit is a one or a three. And therefore this is not the black digit. Oh, this is good. This is good. So we've now locked a black digit into this 13 cage. And that finally is gonna open the puzzle up. 
because now we can't put two in here. So all of those have turned into fours. That digit is a nine. I don't know if that's helpful. But if that's a four, that's a seven, which means that digit's a seven, which means yellow has become two out of nowhere. Um, this is not four nine now. So this is six seven, which is telling us that the gray digit, well, if that's not the gray digit, is it? The gray digit must be six. So that's six, that's six, that's six, that's six. Green has therefore become eight, which I can't actually put everywhere, but I can put into some places. This has become uh, a five nine pair. So that's a five nine pair up here. So this is five or nine. Uh, let's, in fact, maybe we can do those. We can put fives and nines into every blue cell. We haven't got all our blues though. There's a blue in one of these. But there's got, to, oh no, we don't know whether this is blue. Okay, so I don't quite know enough about blueing, blueing the world. Well, there's a blue in one of those. And if this was blue, it would rule out blue from there. So the blue in the bottom, in bottom box can't be here and it can't be there by Sudoku. So that is blue. So blue is nine, which means that's nine and is blue. That is not blue. Every blue cell has to be a nine. Every red cell has to be a five. And we've got six and eight left. To, oh no, hang on. In the, well, in this box, we've got some six and eight -age. What's that digit? That's got to be a seven. Oh, this is, this is because it's the digit that we haven't labeled yet. <laughs> okay. Um, which must be in one of these two cells. One of these two cells. Oh no, it's in one of those two. That's why well, it's in one of those two in this box. So it's not there. So it's there, there, there. That's become six, which is the gray digit, I think. So this has become the blank digit. That's become the blank digit. That's gonna be the gray digit, which is now a six. We haven't put the green digit in this box, so that gets placed. I'm sure that there must be a uh, seven in this box must go here. So that's going to be an eight, which is therefore the green digit that loses its color, not its religion. Um, and then this becomes eight. This becomes something. Uh, what is it going to be? That's become a six. Okay, so that's a grey digit, which means that's a grey digit by Sudoku, which makes that the 7, which means it loses its colour, which means this is the 8, that's an 8, that's an 8, and that should therefore know that digit, which seems to have to be a 9. Now 9, oh, 9 is blue. How many nines have we got? One, two, three. We've got all the nines. We've got, I think we've got all the sevens now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's got to be a six, which is gray. Have I got all the sixes? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. So what is it? I've not done my ones and my threes. So how do I, oh, I see. And then the five cage rescues us. So those become, whoopsie, they become ones to make the five cage add up. Purple becomes three. And we click tick and that's how to solve the puzzle. That's fantastic. Isn't that fantastic? What a beautiful Sudoku. The beginning is just gorgeous. That you can use the fact that the middle digit must be on both diagonals. And just these two cages forced to, well, in fact, those two specific cells having to have different digits in them. I think that almost plotted all of the middle digit in the grid, which is obviously Kodak has discovered this, I think, and therefore built it into the path. But then there was a lot of really clever stuff. I thought it was very clever how you could basically, how did it work? We were able to think about the colors of the digits on the diagonal. And it was this digit. 
having to be in those cells and how it interacted with the five cage that led on to more wonderful discoveries. Yeah, and the only bits of it I, I then felt I struggled with quite um, poorly. Is that the right adjective? I don't know. I felt that I could have done better with disambiguating my sixes, sevens and eights at the end. I couldn't see how to do that cleanly. And in the end, well, I'm glad I didn't resort to that chain on whatever those digits were going to be. Um, and it was, I don't know what it was, maybe it was simply a case of where red went or something. But we found a, we found a better way of doing that. Uh, I'm not sure how, yeah, how forced the end of the solve is. There's probably a few different ways once you get to that point. But yeah, loved it. Loved it as always from the great man. What a what an absolute joy. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.